Welcome back. Today I wanted to do something a little different and give an example of how to use drone footage to help tell a story. Recently I took the drone out to an airport that's been abandoned since the early 1980s. Let's see what we can do to use this footage to help tell the story of this historic site. In the late 1940s and 50s, Hoburg's was a busy airport next to a popular tourist destination in Northern California. Located in the mountains south of Clear Lake, California, Hoburg's Airport opened in 1947. The grand opening brought over 120 aircraft, including larger aircraft like a Douglas DC-3. This Western Cargo Airlines DC-3 flew out a load of Bartlett pears, the primary agricultural crop of Lake County at the time. The airport was intended to service the numerous hot springs resorts that dotted the Cobb Mountain area. These resorts were world famous for their hot springs with healing power. The resorts like Hoburg's, Siegler Springs, and Adam Springs had been popular since the late 1880s. This popularity allowed them to book the top names of the day, like Glenn Miller and the Tommy Dorsey Orchestra. The clear mountain air and luxurious resorts drew actors like Clark Gable and powerful figures like the governor of California. After Interstate 80 was completed in 1956, allowing easier access to the Lake Tahoe area, the luster started to fade off this mountain community. Today, little remains to show what a busy airport this was in its heyday. I had the opportunity to land at Hoburg's in the 1970s. Because of the slope of the runway, you landed uphill and took off downhill, both of which requires you to clear a ridge at the end of the runway. Once you cleared the ridge, you had to slip to lose altitude, making for an interesting approach at the best of times, but if it was hot and windy, it was even more difficult. In addition to providing easy access to these popular mountain resorts, the airport also served as a firefighting base in the 1950s and 60s. In fact, some of the earliest tests of using aircraft for firefighting were done at Hoburg's airport. Testing conducted at Hoburg's included tactics and the use of additives to add to the water to increase the firefighting capability. These tests led directly to the firefighting aircraft that we see in use around the world today. Flying heavily loaded firefighting aircraft out of a mountain strip with a challenging approach would have been difficult in the best of circumstances. But a 2,000 foot field elevation and temperatures approaching 100 degrees Fahrenheit in the summer would make it even more interesting. Little remains of the once thriving resort communities. Siegler Springs was purchased by a meditation cult in the 1970s and remains in their possession to this day. Holberg's remained open for many years. In 2014, it received a multi-million dollar makeover designed to bring it back to its former glory. Before renovations were complete and the resort could reopen, the entire area was ravaged by wildfires in 2015, completely destroying the resort. Today, tourism has been replaced by geothermal power production as the primary industry of the area. Utilizing the same volcanic activity that created the hot springs, power is produced by steam turning large turbine generators scattered throughout the mountain region. Although little remains to show there was even an airport here, the concrete pad that stood next to the hangars is intact and in surprisingly good condition given their age. While I was filming, a surprisingly powerful twister was generated by the late afternoon heat, showing how difficult mountain flying can be. These days, pears and almonds have been replaced by wine grapes as the primary crop of the region. The hills surrounding Hoburg's airport are covered with vineyards in areas that were once nothing but wildland forests. At the southern end of the airport, you can still see the outline of the runway and some of the remains of the concrete, something that wouldn't be visible without the use of a drone. 
I hope you've enjoyed learning something about the history of the airport and the surrounding communities. And I hope I've inspired you to find ways to use your drone to tell the story of your community. If you enjoyed this content, I'd appreciate a subscription. Until next time, thank you for watching.